So here we have a cheap, simple power bank. This one was bought from Poundland here in the UK. If you've never heard of Poundland, it's a discount store where most of the household items are sold for a pound or two pounds. And if you're not familiar with the pound, one pound has the approximate value of about eight and a half bananas. Now this particular USB power bank interests me for two main reasons. Firstly, it only costs two pounds. And B, it doesn't turn off its output. As long as it has a charge in it, it constantly has five volts on the output. And then finally, it is bound to be nowhere near the advertised 200 or 2200 milliamp hour. But those capacity figures will be measured and then added on screen probably on the video now and in the video description below. So let's take a look at this It comes with a lead and a nice little case. Now these little USB power banks are ideal for powering so many simple projects that would otherwise need either disposable batteries or would need their own charging circuit and rechargeable battery. So it's a simple way of getting that uh, charging circuit and uh, battery all in one nice little uh, case. So let's see about opening this up so we can reveal all its loveliness inside. It looks like there's a seam along here. We'll try not to stab ourselves or stab the battery. Don't you hate it when it springs out of your hands? And instantly all of the little plastic clips clip back together again. So here we have it in its loveliness. Just a single 18650 cell coupled with this tiny little circuit board. So I've done a bit of testing on the capacity of these batteries. I bought two of them just to compare if there was much in the way of differences between them and really there wasn't much in the way of a difference. When I got them I charged both of them up uh, till they were full and then discharged both of them with a 400 milliamp load. And one, the capacity was 1444 milliamp hours and the other one was 1439. So really negligible difference between the two models then. Then I charged them up from empty uh, they would take a, a charge of about 0.97 of an amp and this one from empty took 2205 milliamp hour and this one that I've torn apart took 2099 so again very very similar performance from both of them. I then tried discharging at different rates because normally if you discharge at a very low rate you will get a longer battery life or conversely if you discharge at a higher rate uh, you will shorten the life of the battery. So I tried discharging at 1 amp, that's its rated output capacity and I got a capacity of 1323 milliamp hours. Then charged up again, it took about three and a half hours to charge up and this time I tried going low almost as low as my load, my USB load, would uh, go, about 100 milliamps. And it wasn't a bigger capacity, only 1,242. And that was a bit strange. Then on this one, I tried discharging it at greater than its rating. Uh, both of these batteries would be able to put out 1.4 amps before they shut off. So I tried 1.3 amps, but it only gave a capacity of 137 milliamp hours. That is abysmally low. And here it is, it's charging up now from that. When they're charging, they start off at just under an amp, uh, 
drawer to charge and then they gradually taper off after a couple of hours to half an amp and all the way down until they're full. So I took all the data from these discharge capacity tests and put it into the spreadsheet. You can see that these power banks are optimised for around a 400 milliamp load. I also took some thermal images under two load conditions. On the left here we can see uh, 400 milliamp and on the right 1.1 amps. You can see why it was cutting out at loads above 1.2 amp. It was most likely going into thermal protection. So that is this man's story of the Poundland PowerGeek USB power bank. It says it's rated at 2200 milliamp hour, but in reality that's just what it takes to charge itself. The available capacity is about two thirds, around 1400 milliamp hour. But I didn't buy these to charge up other things. These are going to power some future projects, some of which are going to be put on this channel. I will however be making another video on these. Specifically I'm making a 3D printed model, both of the outer case and of the PCB and the cell. The reason for this is so that I can incorporate these into custom 3D printed cases for future projects. If that's something that interests you then watch out for that video. I'll put a link in the description whenever that goes live. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.